I'm sitting here knowing what people are thinking. It's what I thought when I first heard about it. Wow, that's going to be expensive. I could never afford that. <laughs> sure. To which my uh, response always is, well, how much does it cost? Right. And I know that you can't detail everything, but can sure. you give us an idea? Yeah. Yeah. So um, pricing, it's um, just like with anything. If you buy a, a, a thousand widgets from me, the price per widget is going to be less than if you buy one widget from me, right? Okay. So our policies are, are extremely customizable. It's not one size fits all. Um, and so, you know, as you ensure more revenue, the rate decreases. Okay, so if you insure 10 million in revenue versus 50 million in revenue, your rate for 10 million in revenue is going to be a little higher than your rate for 50 million in revenue. So okay. just as an example and not holding me to the actual sure. numbers, but I'm doing 10 million, I might might pay a tenth of percent of sales as a premium. Yeah. If I do 50 million, I might pay three quarters of a percent of sales as a premium. Yeah, yeah, Pro yeah, probably. I yeah. don't even know if those are in the ballpark. But those are a little bit aggressive. Um. <laughs> aggressive which way? <laughs> yeah. Too low uh, or too yeah, high? Yeah, probably a little too low. Because uh, anyway, yeah, I can okay. get Martin's pricing um, from you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so based on that example, 10 million in revenue at a tenth of a percent would be $10,000, okay. which we do have a minimum premium. So, you know, for... Uh, companies that might be in the space of your audience base, you know, I would say on average, you know, uh, a quarter of a percent would be a good ballpark. Of sales. Of sales. Of sales. A quarter of a percent. Okay. Now, we do have a minimum premium of 10 grand. So that's the floor. We have to write a policy for at least 10 grand. Okay. So if you're a $4 million company, a quarter of a percent is 10 grand. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, because as, it's it's uh, below the minimum. It'd be like $2,500 straight up, but you're saying 10 is the minimum. Yeah, tens of million. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, a million dollar company at, at twenty five basis points is twenty five hundred bucks. We right. can't we can't write a policy for right. something that low. So even if you're doing a million sales, yeah. and you want to get a policy, it's going to be ten grand. Ten grand. So, so that, that would be one percent. Yeah, I'm doing four million in sales. I'm going to pay you ten grand for my policy. Mm -hmm. What are some examples of what it's going to cover for me? So essentially, what we cover is we cover any non payment event. So if you're somebody that's doing business with people just here in the U S., there are two major perils. There's there's what we call slow pay. Slow pays are always slow pays until they become a no pay. And when they become a no pay is when you turn it over to us. Right. So right. you've extended credit to somebody. 30 day, we'll say 30 day terms is pretty standard. You know, day, day 60 goes by, you haven't been paid. Day 90 goes by, you haven't been paid. I don't know, day 120, they stop calling you back. Uh, day 150, you say, hey, we're tired of chasing these guys. We're going to go and follow claim with our insurance carrier. Because they're still slow pays right now. Yeah. Well, at that point in time, when you file a claim with us in a slow pay, no pay environment, we have our own internal collections arm and we attempt to collect the debt for 60 days. So we will put calls into our client's customer and make an introduction as to who we are and why we're calling. And we will attempt to collect the debt. If we're unable to collect it after that 60 day window, we process a claim settlement and all of our policies pay 90% of the balance. Okay. There's a built-in 10% co-insurance. Okay. So if it was a hundred thousand dollar claim, we weren't able to collect. We're going to cut them a check for ninety grand. Gotcha. Okay. If I'm feeling real secure because I have an insurance policy, mm -hmm. uh, I might be inclined to go sell to any, any anybody who walks in the door. Sure. It, that's not really your purpose. Uh, you have some requirements of people. Uh, uh, how does it work? Yeah. To to protect you guys. Sure. That, that you're, you know, I'm just saying, okay, I can sell to anybody now. I know they're not going to pay me, but I don't care. Cause, sure. Because Allianz yeah. will. Well, yeah. So, well, can I also backtrack just to sure. the other peril real quick? Yeah, let's do the other yeah, one. That's sorry. what I was going to yeah. say. Yeah. Cause Martin's cause, jumping the gun. He always yeah, does that. I do. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so that was a slow pay environment. And again, they can give the debt to us whenever they want. So technically speaking, if somebody is 30 day terms and they haven't paid in day 31, they could file a claim with us. They don't want to do that because we're going to call them and their customer likely isn't going to want to do business with them anymore. Right. So we tell our clients. Also, there's a chance that a customer would pay on day 35 or day 40 yeah. and you're missing out on 10% of the yeah. invoice. Yeah, right. Well, yeah, right. And that, yeah, that's true as well. So, you know, you want to give it to us when you're tired of dealing with these people and you say, hey, we're ready to move on from them as a customer and we're going to go and give it to our credit insurer. Okay. Uh, the other scenario would just be insolvency. So you have a customer that you've extended credit to, they file chapter seven, 11, 13, 15, uh, just a general meeting of creditors. 
any type of an insolvency event, you would be able to file a claim with us, okay? Now, the difference between obviously a company that's still solvent and a company that's insolvent is a company that files bankruptcy, there's nothing to collect. All the assets and liabilities, everything tied up with the courts. So in a situation of an insolvent company, we don't, our collection people don't call them, there's nobody to call. Uh, we handle the proof of claim and we handle how, filing all the documents with the courts. So as soon as our clients notified of the bankruptcy, they file a claim with us. Uh, we get all the documentation that we need. We handle all the, the, the legal proceedings, the filing, everything. Once the Schedule F is released, which is Schedule F is what outlines how much money the unsecured creditors are owed, uh, and the court verifies it through the proof of claim process. I'm not a bankruptcy attorney. Right. I'm, I'm an insurance guy. Um, but once the debt is verified with the courts and the Schedule F is released, that's when we pay. So the Schedule F says, hey, our client is owed $100,000. Um, we go ahead and cut them a check for 90% of that up front. And then we wait for the bankruptcy to shake out. Now, as most of us know, most bankruptcies result in very little recoveries or minimal recoveries for uninsured creditors. So if after that bankruptcy shakes out, if it was a liquidation and there's nothing left after all the banks and, and secured creditors are paid, the unsecured creditors don't get anything, we have no recoveries. We still paid out the 90 grand. If there are recoveries, we share recoveries with our client that we paid the claim to. So sometimes a bankruptcy comes out and the unsecured creditors get made whole. So if we're made whole, our insured is made whole because again, we paid them. Which 90%. means you give them the 10%. We give okay. them the 10% back, right? So if there's nothing that's, that's recovered, they still walk away with 90 grand. 